Okay, we're going to be talking about the new safe KLOE. As I'm sure everybody knows, uh, my name is Alex O'Neill. I'm Code's professional services manager, uh, and my role involves managing a team of people who go into practices and look at um, and, and do health checks and do audits, uh, compliance due diligence, etc. Uh, so we help out practices with that. I do a lot of the research uh, that goes into iComply and a lot of the research to looking into what the CQC is saying and, uh, and what's coming out in the inspection reports, which is a lot of what's being fed back to you right now. Uh, so it's very, very current information that was researched, uh, well, that's constantly being researched. Um, and I also write quite a bit of iComply as well, which uh, obviously the majority of people in the room here will be using. So by the end of this session, um, I'd like you to understand what the CQC mean by safe. Um, now, most things in a practice and what we'll see is the safe KLOE is very, very broad. It's the, the largest of the KLOEs. So I'm going to cover as much as I can, but it's not going to be exhaustive. Unfortunately, I, I can't cover everything. So I'll be giving you a snapshot and trying to give you the most important things about SAFE. Uh, but we'll see what's actually coming out in the reports. Um, so I'd like to have an, an overview of the SAFE inspection prompts uh, and have an understanding how they link to the fundamental standards. Uh, have an overview of what the CQC are finding in practices. Now I think this is more important than looking necessarily at the prompts and what they're saying in the handbook. I think it's probably more important to see what's coming out on the reports because then we know what they're focusing on. And I'd like you to know how the iComply application is going to help you with the safe inspection prompts. Uh, uh, we'll also see how, um, how not being safe or the CQC not thinking people are necessarily safe feeds in to how, how well-led they think you are, how it feeds into the well-led KLOE. So we'll touch upon that. Uh, just a tiny bit of background. If you've been watching the webinars, this should be familiar to you. So I'm not going to dwell upon this too long. Um, but the, the CQC inspections, there's, there's been a... One of the, the main reasons they changed is because there was this problem of consistency. Um, and the CQC were, were very were highly criticised. At the seminar we did last week, we had one lady who'd had two practices that were uh, inspected within about a few weeks of each other. And one inspection at one practice lasted 25 minutes, sorry, 45 minutes. Uh, and another inspection at another practice lasted six hours. Uh, and as we know, they were pretty much only looking at, say, five out of 17 outcomes that they inspected on. So now the big changes um, are that they're coming for a whole day and they're looking at all of your compliance. So now is the time to understand what they're looking for and to get on top of your compliance because any of those areas that may have slipped, they're coming back and they're going to be looking with an expert eye. They really know every inspection, uh, every inspection has a dentist coming now. Uh, and these inspectors themselves, who are coming with the dentist, so you're getting two people on these inspections, the inspectors themselves are being trained specifically in dentistry, which didn't happen before, so they are only inspecting dental practices. The inspections are data-led, which means they're researching you for up to eight weeks before your inspection, so they can be looking at online sources, health watch, uh, they're speaking to the GDC, there's a range of information they can be looking at. Uh, they're using the key lines of inquiry, um, provider handbooks have now the the, the, uh, the provider handbook has come out of draft and the final version has now been published uh, and they're looking it, it's not just about policies you have to have the policies there's a patient and there's a team focus so you need to make sure that your team are trained on your policies and your policies are up to date okay so that's the provider handbook uh, it's just a quick note about the provider handbook as I said it has been published the final version uh, it's about 60 pages long and I really advise strongly everybody goes and has a look at it because it's got the inspection prompts in it's got examples of evidence and it's their guide to inspecting you and your guide to how they're going to inspect you so if you go on the CQC website you should be able to find that okay so we're not going to dwell on this slide too long either uh, but these are the KLOEs uh, it's safe they're looking at whether you're safe effective caring, responsive, and well-led. And today we're looking at SAFE, which as I've said is very, very broad. A lot of what you do in the practice is considered under SAFE, whilst some of the other KLOEs are a lot smaller. Okay. So, uh, the SAFE KLOEs related to the fundamental standards. Um, 
as I said, most fundamental standards are linked to SAFE. So I'm not sure exactly how helpful this slide is, but I thought you'd might like to see the links on what's covered. And if you're not an iComply member, you can use this information to go and look, along with looking at inspection reports, you can use this information to figure out that when the CQC inspector comes into your practice and he's asking you, are you safe? Um, and he's asking you, are you safe? You know that these are the regulations that he's going to be looking at. And if you go and look at the regulations, uh, which is code members and iComply members especially, you really don't need to do. Uh, obviously, it's a very good thing, but the, the document is 150 pages long. Um, and we're doing that for you with the KLOE report. So if you want to look, you can look, and this is, uh, and you can go and look at the very fine prescriptive details that are in the fundamental standards. Okay, so looking at SAFE in, uh, in more detail, um, I'm just going to look at these prompts and I'll just be staring at my monitor over here because it's easier to read them from here. So we've got SAFE 1, what systems, processes and practices are in place to ensure all care and treatment is carried out safely? SAFE 2, how are lessons learned and improvements made when things go wrong? Uh, so SAFE 1, we're looking at um, things like COSH, uh, RIDOR reporting, sorry, uh, yeah, RIDOR reporting, um, central alert system. Number three, if we look at SAFE 3, what systems, processes and practices are in place to keep people safe and safeguard them from abuse? So this is very straightforward. They're looking at safeguarding, but also under this KLOE, if you look in the handbook, they're looking at information governance and your, the security of your files. Uh, SAFE 4, how are risks to individual people who use services assessed and their safety monitor and ma monitored and maintained? They're talking about Mostly this is talking about your recruitment processes and your, um, your recruitment processes and whether you've got sufficiently trained staff members. It's covered mostly by that. Safe five, potential risks to the surface and to the service, sorry, anticipated and planned for in advance. Um, this is mostly to do with business continuity and disaster planning. And obviously all of these things are covered uh, in iComply, which we'll come to in a bit. And safe six, what systems, processes and practices are in place to protect people from unsafe use of equipment, materials and medicines? And this is huge, as you can see. So they're not quite evenly spaced out, these inspection prompts. Um, and as I said, I don't want to go into these in too much detail because I think it's more helpful to actually look at what's coming out on the report and what we can see uh, from that. Sorry, what is S2? S2, how are lessons learned and improvements made when things go wrong? Um, Rachel just asked. Um, and that's more to do with incident reporting uh, and making sure that any incidents, problems, complaints are fed back in a loop within your practice. And you're feeding that back in meetings and you're improving and learning and you can prove that and there is an audit trail. So I'll just move on from this slide because it's more, it's better if we look in a bit more detail. So when you actually look at the inspection reports, uh, the safe inspection reports that are coming out from the CQC, these are the, uh, the main areas, that these are the titles on every single uh, report under safe. So we've got learning and improvement from incidents, which we were just discussing, um, reliable safety systems and processes, including safeguarding, infection control, equipment and medicines, medical emergencies, staff recruitment and radiography. So again, going into all the detail on every single one of these points would be quite exhaustive, but just as an overview, learning and improving from instruments is what we were just discussing uh, about making sure that there's that feedback cycle. Uh, reliable safety systems and processes, including safeguarding, uh, is obviously your safeguarding, but then things like information governance, etc. Uh, infection control, HTML 105, your cross-infection control audits, your logbooks, equipment and medicines, make sure that you've got the correct uh, medicines, the correct equipment, for, to, especially to deal with emergencies. They're looking at that uh, in quite a lot of detail, uh, whether or not you've got the right emergency drugs, whether or not they're in date, whether or not you have an AED, which by recess council guidelines you must have, and they're highlighting on reports where practices don't have AEDs. So if you don't, and that's a defibrillator, sorry, just in case um, people don't know the, uh, the shortening of that. But if you don't have a defibrillator, you, you must go out and buy one. 
Um, staff recruitment, obviously they're making sure that you have very tight recruitment processes. Um, and radiography x-rays, uh, they, they know that you have to have an RPA, an RPS. And I'm seeing reports that are highlighting where practices uh, don't have properly completed radiation protection folders. And when myself or one of my team goes into a practice to help with compliance, we regularly see incomplete, um, incomplete um, radiation protection folders. Uh, and we also quite often see that local rules aren't on display. So they're, they're highlighting things like this. Um, we're going to go, we're going to actually delve even deeper than this. So this is why I'm actually um, sort of glossing over points on this slide and not going into too much detail on it. Because if we look a bit deeper, there are themes that are coming out around safety. And this is more important. This is probably the most important thing. What we're seeing is that they're very interested in action plans quality assurance and continuous improvement. Which if you're an iComply application member and also an iComply manual member, um, you and you, you are following the system, this is what you are doing. Uh, so quality assurance is essentially about setting standards. So that's reviewing your policies, etc., or doing your risk assessments and getting information from those that feed into your policies. Um, training the team and then auditing, etc., risk assessing and adjusting. So making sure that you're following these things through, which is very, very important. And we'll see that on the next slide. An expert knowledge of HTML 105. Um, they are, because they're sending dentists, uh, they really, really know, and I mentioned this in the last presentation, they really know the details of the decontamination cycle and all the required testing and auditing that you're supposed to do. Uh, including, as we'll see, knowing whether or not the answers you're giving on your audits are correct. So they're not just looking to see that you've ticked your audits, they're looking to see whether you've done them accurately and whether or not you've followed up on them in a reasonable time frame. So staff files, recruitment and training records, uh, they're checking CRBs, they're checking HEP B certificates, uh, and to make sure that you have proof of zero conversion. They are, sorry, uh, and they're looking at your training records to see if you've done appraisals, etc and making sure that staff are supported with good training and the, the most interesting thing that I'm seeing coming out of these reports and I read about 30 of them in the last few weeks uh, is that approximately 50% of the practices uh, that reports have been published on now I do not know whether or not these practices um, were highlighted for for inspection because of previous problems But 50% of the reports are saying there are issues with the safety um, of the practice and are making recommendations and, well, are insisting on improvements. So that's a huge difference to me because before, when we had these non-expert led inspections that didn't look at your whole practice from top to bottom, everybody passed and or the majority of people passed. It was very rare for a practice to actually get corrective actions. Whereas now 50% of the reports are saying that practices aren't doing what they need to be doing. So that's that's a huge difference to me at the moment. So if we go, we can go in even deeper to this, even deeper than this. And we look at the quality assurance focus. So the first, these, these are all from, each one of these points is from a different inspection report. So the first one says that the, um, the decontam decontamination process is not regularly was not regularly audited to identify the shortfalls and to provide an action plan to meet compliance. So this practice is not regularly doing their audits. They're not doing their six monthly HTML 105 audits. When they have done an audit, they've not created an action plan. On the next one, it says infection control procedures have been audited to ensure that practices were being followed in line with current legislation, but the audits had failed to identify shortfalls. So this practice has obviously been doing their audits but not been doing them accurately or hasn't identified issues. And, and some of these reports I've seen say things along the lines of they weren't using boxes to transport the instruments. And obviously it's quite clear on HTML 105 that they should be using transportation boxes. So it's, um, so it's, so, so they really know what they're talking about. And some of them have said they're not doing uh, protein residue checks at the right frequency. Um, and obviously in iComply, 
we make sure that you do do these at the right frequency and we are adjusting I comply and adding this to to make sure that the quality assurance aspect is addressed as well so we'll see that we are and how we, we are we're asking you to create actions um, so not all risk assessments had been carried out rigorously or had action taken in response so moving from that audit focus to the risk assessment focus um, they're saying they've not been either they've not been carried out so they know exactly what risk assessments you should be doing or actions hadn't been taken uh, and they've seen some of these reports you've seen things like um, they, they found problems with the fire safety like there were no fire action notices or the uh, the fire um, the the extinguishers hadn't been serviced these were written down on the risk assessment and then in a cupboard and the inspector found it and they're probably a year old maybe I'm, I'm assuming they're a bit old and nothing had been done so obviously they, they want to make sure that you're doing these actions within a reasonable time frame and then the last one though the practice carried out risk assessments to identify and manage risk however they were not regularly reviewed so they've done them put them in a cupboard and they've probably just not done them again and obviously in I comply these things are scheduled for you every single year uh, to make sure that you do them and make sure you follow up on them so with with safety failings um, that picture on the right there is actually from an actual practice the a, a friend of ours a, an inspector found and, uh, and took some pictures of um, so so looking at things that they found um, the first one there is they found that the practice was not following best practice in accordance with quality guidelines for endodontic treatment now in iComply, the way that we cover this is you have a step on iComply evidence, an evidence-based dentistry step to make sure that you are following best practice and you are aware that you need to be following best practice. So we remind you of this and to make sure that your dentists um, are following best practice. Uh, and again, that highlights that they, they really know, they're sending dentists who know, and I think this was specifically about rubber dams. They found a practice that wasn't using any rubber dams for endo in any way, and they were very critical of it. The second one there, the practice did not have the recommended medicines and equipment available to deal with medical emergency should it occur. Well, well in iComply we have the emergency medical equipment step and the associated logs to make sure that you are doing that oxygen logging and the medical emergency drugs logging. And if you have delegated that to, that to someone, I do advise you just go and double check it every now and again. The third one there, the, the provider should make improvements in ensuring all relevant recruitment checks were undertaken before staff commence their job. Well, we have a whole recruitment section within iComply um, covering uh, recruitment and interviewing, right to work in the UK, fitness of directors and employees to meet the new standard. And the last one there is, there, were, the, there was no system to record and share learning from accidents or untowards incidents. Well, we have the whole incident reporting step that you will be following and uh, we share in every single meeting agenda, there is a point to share learning to do with incidents. Uh, so we've got this all covered for you. Um, but it's interesting to see the depth that they're going to and that 50% of practices they are finding problems with on these, on these points. So I mentioned this earlier. Um, if you're not safe, then, or if the CQC considers that you're not safe, or you, you have safety failings, let's not go so far as that, um, they're, they're linking it with some practices to saying that you're not well led because as you can see with, with, with these two points on the slide, the bottom point, well they found, these, this is the same practice, but they found that actions weren't taken to do with fire risk assessment, Legionella, infection control, so obviously, um, so obviously um, they found these problems and then in the well led section of the report they're, now, then, they're, they're then questioning the management of the practice and saying that they must have a system of management that ensures that audits are carried out and actions taken in a timely manner. So the majority of you with iComply are doing this and you have a system and you will be able to show the CQC. Now another reason I mention this is because um, a lot of the time when we go into practices that have fallen behind with compliance, and you've got to remember now that, that they're not just looking at a third, they're looking at everything and they expect you to be on top of it all of the time. So it's, it's, got, a, it's got a bit more serious now. Um, and we go into practices that have fallen behind and there's always a good reason. The, the receptionist has left or the practice manager has gone, but the business hasn't been able to flex to stay on top of the compliance. And you've got to think now if an inspector comes and looks at your practice and you're in this sort of a position, um, 
they're just going to say that the management wasn't set up to deal with it. So you need to think in your business contingency planning, what are you going to do in order to make sure the compliance carries on? Do you have more than one person trained on it? I mean, in our system in iComply, we have multiple members. You can have multiple team members. And if you're following the system, we should tell you what to do, how to do it, when to do it, where to file it, then that system's independent of you. So you can train anybody else on it. Anyone can leave, anyone can come back, and you can just transfer over activities. If someone goes on maternity leave, you can transfer over whole compliance areas to somebody else, um, and they can carry on with it. So you're not going to get that point, hopefully not going to get to that point, where you start falling behind and can't stay on top of your compliance. And this is very, and, and, and you don't, wouldn't like to get a CQC report that says that you're not well led because you've let this slip. Obviously things can slip for a month, but if you're six months behind essential risk assessments, essential audits, and you're not following through on those actions, I think that could raise concerns with them now. Okay, so just a little bit about surface signs. I mentioned this, uh, and for anyone who's been to any of our seminars, we talk about this in a bit more depth, but just a bit about surface signs. When, when we go into practices, it's quite easy and you, you can see quite quickly whether or not a practice is, is, is well led and especially well led and, and safe. So if we look at this practice, uh, we can see different things here and, and it's very apparent straight away that this practice might not be safe because I've got an old health and safety law poster. Um, we can see uh, clean instruments and dirty instruments mixed on top there. And on the left there, I think that's a, um, an x-ray unit from the 1920s. I don't think there's a digital timer, etc. So you've got to imagine if a CQC inspector came in and saw these things, uh, they'd probably want to like peel a few more layers off the onion, look a little bit deeper into your practice, look at how well led you are and use the good governance uh, fundamental standard to really look into depth uh, on things that if the surface signs showed them uh, or the surface signs showed that you were safe, then maybe they wouldn't look that deep. Now, I know they said they're going to be consistent, and I know they've said they're going to be equal, but I still think everyone's a human being, and if you can, uh, if you can dispel those concerns straight away, then you're going to be one step ahead. So just a few safe surface, uh, safe surface signs to share with you just from what we see. But obviously your HSE poster, I'm sure everybody has the right HSE poster up, but please make sure that it is the latest poster. Um, have a first aid sign up uh, to show that you care and where it's located. Have an AED or an a even an AED sign. You have to have the AED, but having it somewhere on display, prominent on the wall can be quite good. You don't have to do it, but it's a nice sign and it will reassure an inspector. Um, instrument drawers. Open, go around your practice, open the instrument drawers and have a look inside. Is everything that should be bagged, bagged? Is everything that's bagged, stamped? It's very easy to see very quickly how well cross-infection is managed in a practice just by going into a few surgeries and opening a few drawers. And I'm sure you will do it, uh, but I'd really, really advise it if you, if you haven't done it in a while. Uh, employer's liability certificate. It's very easy to have last year's certificate on the wall. I think I've been guilty of that myself. Uh, and prioritizing other things, but it is a legal requirement that you have the latest one on the wall. And if you have the time, I'd go and check, make sure it's the right one and laminate the, if it's not, laminate the right one and put it on the wall. Uh, and safety signs, safety signage and fire notices. So with safety signage and fire notices, um, obviously you ha if you've not got fire notices on the wall and there have been some practices that don't have any sort of escape notices and I always ask the question if I was a patient sat here in the waiting room and there was a fire how do I get out so I know that some of this is really really obvious really really basic simple stuff but it's this that basic simple stuff that we're if we're in our practices we maybe don't even notice we're so used to the fact that it's not there and we don't put ourselves sometimes into the the into the shoes of a patient and think hold on if I was a patient sat in this practice, what can I see, what can I not see? And again, if I'm an inspector, so try and think in line uh, with, with those safety items we looked at earlier and what, a patient, uh, what a, a patient or an inspector could see. So how code helps you as code members to stay safe? Uh, we have in iComply something called the annual management review. Um, 
this is one of the last uh, things in your cycle. So at the end of the year, and it's really, really important, it's your safety net. So at the end of the year, uh, you sit down with all your risk assessments, all of your audits, and you make sure that you've dealt with everything before you begin your next cycle. Make sure that those outstanding actions have been dealt with. Uh, and make sure that, um, obviously you probably should have dealt with them a bit earlier if you've scheduled them, but this is like a safety net just to make sure that you get those done. Um, and, and obviously look for any trends. So is, is there a particular team member who's not pulling their weight or someone who needs retraining to make sure that they're doing it correctly? Um, health checks and mock inspections. Uh, health checks are our full practice audits where we come in and we look at you from top to bottom. I'd recommend them to you if you uh, don't have the time to do it yourself. Uh, and we look at it obviously objectively and we look at everything and we see where you are in line with where you're supposed to be right now and we'll advise you on what your compliance gap is and the best way to meet it. Mock inspections, we are working currently with an ex-CQC inspector uh, and it's probably coming in the next month or two. So it'll be similar to the, the health checks, probably within the next month, similar to the health checks, uh, but we're gonna interview your team members as well. So if anyone thinks their compliance is great, uh, we can do that announced or unannounced uh, to surprise your team uh, if you want to have a, a reactive inspection. Guidance based on actual inspection. So all this information that we're giving you is information we get from our members and we get from reading the inspection report so you don't have to. Um, KLOE report the safety prompts. We're going to look at that shortly. We have in the back of iComply linked all of the activities that you do to the, or the activities that you do that make the, that the CQC would consider safety activities. Uh, we have linked to the inspection prompts from the handbook. And when you complete that activity and you mark it as complete, you create an entry in your compliance report that shows how you meet that safe prompt. So you can then go and actually uh, navigate and filter the compliance report, the KLOE report, by the safety prompt, and you could show it to the inspectors and show them how you're meeting everything. So they can see what you're doing in line with what they're looking for. Okay. Uh, seminars, uh, we've just finished our, our last seminar in Birmingham. I believe we're planning another one, but you'll hear about that. That's obviously where we spend a lot more time going into a lot more detail on these things and giving you, uh, this is obviously an overview of SAFE. We spend a lot longer on this at the actual seminar itself. Uh, and free webinars like this. As an iComply application member, you get these webinars every single month. And if you complete 10 of them, you can fill out a form and you can get an iComply certificate to say that you are an iComply expert. So you missed information on guidance based on actual inspections. Um, well, this is, this is what we're doing right now. We are giving you guidance based on the actual inspections and we are, we, we're always working on documents to make sure that the information that you will get is current and you will have information in documents based on inspection. So we're working on that at the moment, but the, the inspections are quite new, so we're still waiting for more information to publish a document like that. So, so this is the most current information you're getting right now. And this is based on research we've been doing in the last month or so. So the iComply uh, reports, we've got the Fundamental Standard Report and the KLOE report. I spoke about how they're, they're linked to the, 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 the Fundamental Standards Report is linked to the Standards Report in the same way the KLOE report is linked to the prompt. So when you complete them, you're compiling this ongoing report in the back of iComply that you or an inspector can navigate any time. And the idea is that it becomes an inspection hub. So when you, so, so basically when an inspector turns up, you could sit them down in front of iComply application, log them in, go to the inspection to the KLOE report, and what they have on their sheet of inspection prompts is exactly what you've got on that report, and they can see what you do to meet those prompts, which we'll see in a minute. We're going to have a look at that. So everyone should be able to see I comply right now. Um, so if I go down here on the left-hand side, I've got this button here for the compliance report. And if I click on here and select my practice, it's A1 Dental, it's not an actual practice, of course. And over here on the right-hand side, we've got three reports. The 2012 report will be removed shortly. And then if I go to the KLOE report, and I click on Inspection Prompts, 
and I click this button here to toggle. So if you imagine if you have an inspector come, coming into your practice and he's asking these questions about how safe you are, you can come here, click on safe, click to apply the filter, and what you'll see down here is all of the inspection prompts and what you do. And as you're completing I comply, these will be completed with the notes and the, where the evidence is stored, the information that you enter. We'll have a look at that in a second, how you do that. So we've got multiple, as I said, it's one of the largest ones in iComply, or in, sorry, the, K, the largest KLOE, but we've got meetings as well to show that you are feeding back and lessons learned. And we've got all of the risk assessments and audits that you're doing within iComply. So that shows the inspector and shows you how safe you are. And you can filter that right now. So for any of you who've completed the cycle or have completed anything in iComply, you can go and have a look at that after we finish today. So if we were to look at, a, at how this actually works and how this affects your compliance report, so if I go to the calendar for my new practice, and we can see here we've got a health and safety risk assessment, which is important as we just looked, the CQC are very interested in your risk assessments to make sure you're doing them correctly and your audits. If I clicked on the health and safety risk assessment, we've got an activity description at the top. Now, I won't read through all of this, but I'll pick out some key points. So the important point is this one here, and we're putting here that we strongly recommend that any actions arising from risk assessments are scheduled as to-dos in the iComply calendar, so they can be tracked in your compliance report. So we'll have a look at how we'll do that in a second. You see here we can file the risk assessment in folder two. And if we go into related templates, this is where we'll get the risk assessment. So this is where, the, in, in any iComply activity, the document that you need is there for you. You should be told what to do, how to do it, given the documents to do it, and there it should be. So I've got the health and safety risk assessment here, and I'll download that. And then what I'm going to need to do if I'm doing a risk assessment is customise it to the practice. Now, we have filled this out as much as we can for you, but it is a template, and this is a very, very important point. It's a template that you need to customize to your business, uh, to your practice. So for example, a, 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 a normal, or a, a, um, something we see quite often, is that people haven't taken out control measures that don't apply to them. Or say, here, or they're taking out hazards that don't apply to them. So if you don't have lasers in your practice, you can get rid of the lasers section. And at the bottom, say under the sharp section here, we've got all of the control measures that you could possibly have in place to deal with sharps. So you need to get rid of the sharps control measures that don't affect you. So once we've done that, we'll read the instructions on it, we'll fill that out, it'll be, it'll be dealt with, we'll, and we'll create actions from that. So we need to sign it off in iComply and we need to create the actions. So if I was in iComply, I'd come down to this bottom to this bottom, sorry, to the bottom of the page, and I say what I did. So whether or not I downloaded the template, well, I did. Did I need to update it or adapt it? Well, it's a risk assessment, I did. Now, any actions from this activity have been completed or have been scheduled? Well, we're gonna schedule them afterwards, so we're gonna tick that now, and we're gonna file it. Where did it tell us to file it? It told us to put it in folder two. So we're gonna file it in folder two, which will be on our compliance report to show the inspector and to state what evidence we have. So we're just going to say risk assessment. I'll put more information here, uh, just because we're, we're running short of time. So risk assessment completed, uh, identified need to purchase, um, let's say hazard tape. So we don't have any hazard tape in the practice. And we've got some hazards, some little chips on the floor. So we've identified a need to purchase some hazard tape and to um, and to get and to get some safe uh, resheathing devices or resheathing needles. Sorry, I've forgotten what they're called. <laughs> but we'll, we'll say resheathing needles. Um, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark that as complete because it's done. And it's going to put that entry onto my compliance report. Right, 
what I'm then going to do is create actions. And this is new. So if anyone who's had our training, we've always spoken about this, but the CQC are now looking at this and it's more important to create actions and track them and make sure they're done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this button here, new to do. And I'm going to create, I'll just create one of them for now, but I'm going to say purchase the hazard tape. Input from health and safety risk assessment. And I'm going to, I've got time to do that tomorrow, so I'm going to put that in for tomorrow. I'm going to create it. And you can now see that's appeared on my calendar here to purchase the hazard tape and also on my dashboard. So I can never forget about it. So if you create these to do's after your risk assessments or audits, they will be on your dashboard right here. So I'm going to click on that on my dashboard and I'm going to complete it. What I'm then going to do is go back to the compliance report and see that entry. So if I go to KLOE, inspection prompts, and I'm going to filter it by safe and apply the filter. As I go down, I should be able to find the entry. There we go. So the health and safety risk assessment, I can see that it was completed and an inspector can see this and you want to use this as a hub for your inspection. So I can see that it was completed on the 28th of April. You can see the risk assessment was completed, identified needs. I probably should have written in there actually and created to do's. I should have written that as well. And then where's the evidence stored? It's in folder two. So the CQC inspector could pull out folder two with you and find the risk assessment there. And also, if you go down to the bottom section, you can see the to do there to purchase the hazard tape and when it was completed. So they can see exactly everything you've done, all the actions and how you've followed them through. So, um, obviously, as I said before, with iComply, if we have a quick look at the calendar, we've also got scheduled in for you all the other risk assessments or audits that are legally required at the moment. And then you can see we've got the fire risk assessment and the, uh, the infection prevention control audit, which we're going to make sure that we do that properly. We identify the actions. We put that in because they are looking at that as a fine tooth comb. And when we sign that off, that'll be on our compliance report as well.